Hello everyone and welcome. It is nice to see you and I'm grateful you're here. My name is Francesco and with today's video, I want to show you how the Ontario Building Code quantifies how many people will be in a certain space. Let me set the scene. In topic two, we learned that the Ontario Building Code identifies all buildings into major occupancies, right? Remember that? Well, as it turns out, different major occupancies have different requirement for how many people will be using that space. So, for example, if you are in a very busy place, I don't know, like a stadium for a concert or a sporting event, that's a lot of people, right? But I guess that wouldn't be surprising, especially if it's a good concert. <laughs> Why, please? Right. So what if instead of a busy concert, you are in a library studying or doing research? I suppose you would expect fewer people than a stadium or a concert venue, right? Or... What if you were at your local grocery store just walking through the aisles for the ingredients of your favorite meal? Depending on where you are, whether it is a library or a packed concert stadium, you would likely expect many people or just a few people, right? Well, with today's topic, we will learn to calculate exactly how many people will be expected to occupy any space as long as we can identify these two ingredients the major occupancy for that space and the floor area for that space oh and one more thing before we jump into this okay everything we're covering today with this video is only valid for part three buildings it is not valid for the vast majority of Part 9 buildings. Remember, we covered the difference between Part 3 and Part 9 buildings in Topic 3. So please, be sure to review Topic 3 if you do not remember how to distinguish between, between Part 3 buildings and Part 9 buildings. Okay, how about we jump into this right away? Let's start with using the correct terminology. The proper building code terminology for the number of people is occupant load. We're going to learn occupant load by doing three examples. For each of these examples, we will assume the building is a part three building. In preparation for each of these three examples, Please find table 3.1.17.1 in volume 1, division B of the Ontario Building Code. Also, have your calculator ready. So, for our first example, let's make myself better visible. Let's determine the occupant load for 1,000 meters squared of office space. Also, remember that we need two ingredients to make this work. The major occupancy for that space and the floor area for that space. We already have the floor area, right? It is given to us as 1,000 meters squared. So let's find the major occupancy. Using what we learned in topic two, we can determine that office space is a D major occupancy as you can see right here, where D occupancies are also called business and personal services occupancies. And if it helps, here right below, you can see some of the relevant building code references that I used from topic two to arrive at this result. Terrific. Now let's use table 3.1.17.1 to determine the occupant load factor. As you can see, table 3.1.17.1 is arranged in two columns. The left column lists all major occupancies 
from assembly to industrial, and it does it in six horizontal rows, right? The right, and these are the six uh, rows for the major occupancies. The bottommost row is for any major occupancy that does not fall into the six that we normally use, right? And that's why that row is called other. The right column lists the occupant load factor that corresponds to that chosen occupancy once we pick it from the table. So let's look at this table for a moment if we could. Do you see how all major occupancies are listed right here? In order, it shows assembly occupancies here. These are the ones identified as A1, A2, A3, and A4. Then care, care and treatment, or detention occupancies are here. Remember, these are the ones identified as B1, B2, and B3, followed by residential, which are the C occupancies, and business and personal services, which are the D occupancies. Next are mercantile, which are the E occupancies. And then we have industrial, which are F1, F2, and F3 occupancies. Finally, at the very bottom is other. You use other only if the building you are analyzing cannot be identified by anything else in the table. What I normally do is write the corresponding letter of the major occupancy on the table to make it easier to use this table. So for the assembly occupancies, I write A like this, A1, A2, A3, and A4, because that's what these occupancies are. Similarly, for care, care and treatment, or detention, I write B here, so B1, B2, B3 occupancies. For residential, I write C here. For business and personal services, I write D here, the way you see it. Then for mercantile, I write E. And for industrial, I write F1, F2, and F3. And finally, always, don't forget, this is so important, other, I actually write other right here, right? All you see, see it at the bottom? so I don't forget about that. Great, back to our example, remember that? <laughs> so for this example, we determined that office space is a D occupancy. So the appropriate portion of table 3.1.17.1 is right here, I'm showing it right here, under business and personal services. We have two entries that we can choose from, right in the left column, one is for personal services shop, and one is for offices. In this case, for office space, the best selection is offices, right? Which directs us to a load factor right here of 9.30 meters squared per person. So let me clean things up on the screen a little bit for a moment to find the occupant load we must divide the area by the factor we just figured out right here, this factor right here, like this. 1,000 square meters divided by 9.30 meters squared per person gives us 107.53 people. Okay, just the way you see it right here. We're not done yet though. The answer is actually not very good because people like you, like me, we're human beings and therefore we are counted as whole number, not decimals. So we don't have 0.53 of a person. What this number here means is that we have more than 107 people and the smallest whole number that is more than 107 is 108. There we go. The occupant load 
for 1,000 meters squared of office space is 108 people like this. So for these kinds of problems, please don't forget. People are whole numbers, so always round up. And make sure that all relevant building code references are included to obtain full marks. How about another example? Yes, let's do it. But I will do it in a more handwritten fashion as opposed to making things appear on the screen, if that's okay with you. That way you get the experience of what I would like to write it. Also, because this video is now getting a little bit long, I'm gonna stop it and I'm gonna link the next two examples in the description below. Thank you and see you in a moment for the second part of this video.